Now, a large majority of Nigerians are poor, and according to reports in 2023, nearly 12% of the world population in extreme poverty lived in Nigeria, considering the poverty threshold at um, $1.90 right, a day. Now, this number is increasing, and overall, the number of people living in extreme poverty in Africa was estimated to reach 422 million in 2025 by um, Statistica. Now, this is why nurturing a culture of giving is crucial for building stronger communities, fostering individual growth, and achieving a more just world. By promoting acts of generosity, we can alleviate poverty, bridge social divides, enhance individual well-being, create a more equitable global society and inspire future generations to embrace compassion and responsibility. So today we're discussing the life-changing impact of building a giving slash donating culture. Now please let's hear what you have to say. Remember you can join this conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to the rate one eight zero three eight four six six three. So I'll just want to ask you ladies to, to I mean for two seconds. When last did you give and what did you give out? Or donates, whatever you want to call it. Um, so giving is. So I would say the last time would be someone on the road. Okay. Uh, the beggar. You, on the you road. do that all the time. As, as much as I can. Okay. As not every time because they can also get quite mm -hmm. ill behaved. <laughs> so <laughs> not all the time, but yeah, I do that as often as I can. Mm -hmm. Once I have something to give you. Yeah, mm. How about you, Jennifer? Uh, that would be two weeks ago. Okay. And three weeks ago. So I gave out money to someone who just gave birth. And um, she needed money to take care of her child. And then um, also gave out some clothes to some other set of people. But then my church also, we do some form of donation where mm -hmm. we give out, like I think like maybe twice or three times a year. Yeah, I, I yeah, do some donations yeah. to so that. So we go too. to a community in yeah. Jakande and then people bring money, they bring clothes, they bring food, and then we just give it out to people. Mm. Nice. Yeah. nice, 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 nice. So Tyro Saeed Akinsayam is a member of the Nigerian Institute of Management and Certified Safety Professionals at the Institute of Safety Professionals in Nigeria. He is the co-founder, chairman, board of trustees, ex esteemed um, lifesaver in initiative, a non-for-profit organization. He is a sickle cell advocate, passionate blood humanitarian, and has voluntarily donated blood to save lives more than 20 times. Ah, I will tell you why I clap later. So it's a culture for uh, members of the ELSI to donate blood on their birthdays. That's fantastic. Through his organization and collaboration with the Lagos State Blood Transfusion Services this, and Sickle Cell uh, Foundation in Lagos and the North, he has helped to mobilize hundreds of voluntary blood donors to boost the supply of blood in health facilities and save many lives and he is joined us live in studio hi hi, hi. hi. <laughs> all right so let me tell you why i clapped okay. many years ago i think alpha was like uh, a, a year old i was um i was breastfeeding and uh, my sister-in-law she was in a critical state in the hospital sadly we lost her but she was in a critical state in the hospital and i remember because i am a universal donor I remember Sorry. them calling us like in the middle of the night. We had to leave Magodo all the way to VI here because the hospital was in VI here. So the, the nurses were asking, Ma, you're breastfeeding. Can you donate? I said, of course. You understand? So I donated the blood. I think I did, I did about two pints that night. I was then. So it was the guy that donated blood. It was just one. I think he was able to donate or maybe half. Oh my, the guy's <laughs> eyes were studying. He <laughs> was studying on his own. So that's why I said, you said 20. I said, ah. Because I hear that it, it, it takes a toll mom, guys. Maybe women, because we're used to, because we do monthly circles. Circle, I mean, yeah. month, so maybe we're used to blood leaving us. Yes. So maybe yes. that's why we did But the guy, almost, I think half pint of blood. The guy's <laughs> eyes, they had, to, they had to sit him down to give him malt. <laughs> so when I saw 20, I said, ah, no. Oh. This one deserves a hand clap. But thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Oh, just on the side. I mean, yes. I want to discuss. The, the, the subject of you know changing um, the narrative and building a culture of giving and yes. donating. Yes. Um, I know my church, for instance, in Daystar, um, they built that culture in most of our members. So what we do is 
when you have clothes that you're no longer using, you know, yeah. just make sure it's in a good state. If it yeah. needs amending, amend it, wash it, they tell you how. Yeah. Can't just go and dump things like that. You have to wash it, you have to iron it, yeah. you have to wash fold it neatly so yeah. I mean so that you are giving it with dignity, not that you're just dumping things on people. Mm -hmm. Then also if you can't do that, you can do cash donations, they buy food stuff because they do that every single I think now it's even more than every circle in, in a year, maybe festive seasons, they always do that. You will see, yeah. but we have a full-blown, full-fledged benevolence department. So where you just go to donate um, things. So every now and then, my children have the culture. Once the thing does not fit anymore, because most of the things are still in good shape, yes. they clean it up and they pack it. Mommy and daddy, we need to go and drop it, you know. So we, we've built that culture. But I realized that um, giving is not so much of... Um, uh, what's it called? A difficult thing for Africans. But the problem I am having was what she mentioned about beggars on the street. And I want to come from that angle. Mm -hmm. You understand? How has that impacted in the giving culture? Because I think now a lot of people are becoming very distant from empathy or emotions because they just feel like these things have become a business. So it is very difficult you know, to give. So maybe we'll start from there. Okay, um, awesome. Thank you uh, for having me. <laughs> Thank you, Riz. Yes, okay. So, um, you started with giving out clothes, used items, and maybe cash and all that. We're still going to come back and relate it to blood donation of as course, well, because that's, that's also giving, yes. Okay, so um, just a short story. While I was coming here, I stopped by at the mechanic, and while I was there, some guys came to me, and they were like, hey, Baba, you know, all those guys, you know, there was one that had, like, a cut on his mouth. You know these guys now that yeah, rough. when you're yeah, rough guys, yeah. So when it gets dark, what they do, they switch to stealing, mm. you know. So they came to me and they were like, I had money with me, but I chose not to give them. Mm. Because they could work. The guy fixing the car was a the mechanic. They could do something with their hands. They are fit and you know, agile, they could they could do something. So why would you beg when you can do something? Mm. While I was while they came to me, a guy came, was selling air fresheners. And um, told him to buy. I said, no, this thing irritates me. I won't really buy, but I'll, I, I can do something for you. So I bought, actually bought one of 600 Naira. While transferring to him, I transferred 1,000 Naira. I told him that, look at these other guys that came. You met them. They, they met you here. Mm. They are begging around. They are not doing anything. But you, you are carrying this fresh. How much are you going to earn from it? Let me add to that. So the culture of giving is, um, is something from the arts, but it gets to a stage where you get weary, you get tired of it, when you feel that you have been um, taken advantage of. Yeah. Yes. So, but, to, but sometimes when you are, when you, you, your culture is just to give, sometimes you don't look at that and you give. Whatever they do with it, it's their business, but you are trying you've done, to be, your you've part. done your own part mm. of, uh, in it. So, mm. giving out clothing items, it should be a practical thing, it's a very easy thing to do because most of the times, we go out, we buy new clothing, and over six months, we have things in our wardrobe. Even one year, two years, I will not touch. Not touch that, and they're still in very good shape. So why not just give them out? So personally, I have that culture. Whenever I'm buying something new, I give out something old. Mm. You understand? So I think as Nigerians, or as Africans, or as human beings, if we can invite that kind of culture, I think a lot of people will be happy. Mm. This can help people happy. So let's, let's, let's move quickly to yeah. blood. Yes. Right. Um, blood donations, because, I mean, you did something really fantastic, you know, partnering with some of the institutions to drive the, the need for blood donation. Yeah. But first of all, is it truly a need? You know, do people actually look out for, I mean, sorry, are people truly in need of blood, the way it is being projected? Is it a, is it a reality or is it just um, a myth or it's not, a re it's not true? It, it, it's a reality. It's a reality. We have, just as I was watching the screen now, talking about the lady that was caught in Dubai. Mm. If only those that were around her could arrest her blood, for instance, she wouldn't have lost so much blood. And if it was arrested and she finds her way into the hospital, she might have needed at least one pint of blood. Mm. So that's a need. And we have these instances every day. Whenever we're driving on the road, you see an accident, people losing so much blood. By the time they get to the hospital, they need blood. We have cancer patients, they need blood due to chemotherapy, they lose a lot of blood. We need to transfuse them. They need, we need to replace their blood for them to continue to live. We have mothers in the hospital, labor, yeah, during labor, they lose a lot of blood. Mm. We don't have enough blood. You know, the first thing to think is that 
blood is not manufactured. You can't manufacture blood. It has to be given from human to human. If so easy for us to get animal blood, we'll be killing rams every day mm. or to get their blood. But it has to be passed from human to, to, human. to, to, um, to human. So the hospitals need blood. Almost every hospital would need someone you know, to give blood to someone to mm. continue to live. We are short of blood in Nigeria. The blood banks are almost depleted and we need people to donate blood. Mm. So that's that's our own passion. That's what we want to do. We want to try to get people to do, more people to donate, donate blood so that we can replenish the stock of blood in blood banks in Nigeria. Mm. So to your, back to your question, we need blood. Mm. Whenever there's an accident, whenever someone is sick, blood needs to be transfused for them to continue to live. Mm. The, what are the typical um, misconceptions around donating blood? Okay, well, first of all is that um, a lot of people, I think it's something that I actually want to say at the end of the show, but let me just bring it out now. A lot of people think that blood has been, your blood is being sold. When you donate blood, especially when yeah. you're really, it's being sold. <laughs> Yes, so that's number one thing because there was a time when I posted um, that blood drive for the Arkansas. It's um, someone just sent a message after all they will sell they will sell the blood, and I'm like, okay, um, blood is not something you get just anywhere. Just like water, when you buy water, uh, most of the time we buy processed water, you know, filtered water, mm. bottled water, and the cost varies depending on wherever you go to. If you go to a bar on the island, you know how much you buy water mm -hmm. for. You, most of, sometimes, most of the time, you can't just go and fetch water from the stream and drink. Absolutely. Yes. These days we buy, is, the least we can buy is pure water mm. or uh, bottled water. Right. This water goes through some process of filtration, cleaning and all that. It, it, the process of bagging it costs money. Mm. So just the same way blood is. When you give blood, the pint of blood and the bag of blood that is used to collect your blood cost money. Okay. The officials that take the blood from you are going to be paid. The facility needs to be maintained as well. It's going to cost money. When, you, when that blood gets to the lab, it's going to be tested for about 12 um, infections. And all these chemicals or reagents used to test it will cost money. So at the end of the day, the end user would need to pay for all these things. Mm. So we have private blood, blood banks that are running on, you know, that rely on revenue from blood to run. We have the government blood ba and banks as well. They also need money mm. to run, to function. You know, just like the Lagos State Blood Transmission Services has a center in, in Bagada, Lagos. They need, it's a very functional um, center mm. with, you know, what, um, what class equipment. For them to continue to run, I'm very sure that Fund is needed. Mm. Fund from the government might not be enough, you understand, but fund is needed. So when you say blood is being sold or people need to buy blood, it's because all these factors are You have place. called out yes. for. Okay, NJ. I'm sure at some point in time, I have donated blood before, but um, how easy is it to just walk into a center? Mm, how many center. centers do they have in Lagos? How easy is it to just walk into a center so, and, donate blood? and donate blood? It's quite quite easy. <coughs> it's quite easy to just walk into. There are centers, um, um, laboratories, private laboratories in Lagos that you could walk into. But um, we always recommend a government facility because they are sure that your blood is safe. Yes. So most of these government facilities have their um, hematology departments or labs where you could walk in and just tell them you want to donate blood and they will attend to you. Government? Yes. Okay. Yes. As, like I mentioned, Lagos State Blood Transfusion Services, once you walk into, into that place, it's a very nice, cozy environment. You can donate your blood. Within 20 minutes, you are done and that's it. Mm. Well, I wanted to ask okay. though, because I know that that night that I donated blood, it was, the way, it was tested first. Yes. So why do why because I know that they test you first, right? So why do, why does the blood still need to go through since I'm, I've already been tested, mm -hmm. and you know I've gotten a pass mark before they even decide to take exactly. my blood? Yes. So why does the blood still need to go through that process of being tested again? That that eventually now increases the cost. Okay, fine. When you are being tested, you're only being tested for HIV. No, 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 for <laughs> HIV. <laughs> They only tested to be fit. They yeah. want to see okay. if you're fit. Okay. So they check your blood sugar. Um, they check your blood pressure as well. So then the other processes, checking for syphilis, gonorrhea, HIV, hepatitis, they take 
uh, time. So they can't really test that while you are, you know, donating the blood. Mm. So it has to go through the laboratory and take some time. So mm. the only thing they test you for is to ensure that you are fit to donate blood. Oh, that's what they that's what they will do the pre check yeah, yeah, before pre -check. they now take the, the blood and then take it to the yeah. to the laboratory. Definitely. Very interesting. So, <laughs> I wanted to ask. So what happens? By the time they test the blood, and maybe there's... We don't return it back to me. There's one complication or the other one, really. Okay. If they say they need to use that, they will be there. So what, you'll come and sit down, and then they will check? No, no, no. It's useless to anyone, so it's going to be destroyed. Right, so... And, um... Of course, there's this um thing about confidentiality. If Because while you're... Before you donate blood, there is a form to fill. All your details will be there, right? So if there's something wrong with your blood and they need to communicate it with you, you get a call and then you come to the facility and the advisor and all that. So say say I want to donate blood tomorrow. Are there steps that I need to take yeah. um health wise? Like because prepping I yourself. Like prep you know what? Before, before, before that, that, before that. So let's take a very short break. I'd like for you to answer that when we come back from that break. Okay. So please don't forget that thought. Stay with us, we'll be right okay. back. Thanks for staying with us. Now, if you just tune in, we're having an amazing conversation with Saeed on um, life-changing impact of building a giving slash donating culture, and we're specifically narrowing it down to blood, right? Donating blood. Now, uh, please let's hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp is very one eight zero three eight four six six three. So Jennifer had asked you a question before the break, like what are the preps? If she says. First thing tomorrow morning, she's going to Bagada Center to mm -hmm. go and give blood. Mm -hmm. What should she be she, doing? Okay, okay. Um, first of all, you need to have a good night's sleep. Mm. Yes, yes. Or before then, uh, if you if not had dinner, eat some eat some vegetables, right? Some and take a lot of water, a lot of water and vegetables. I think you'll be fine. So then, um, by the morning, eat your normal breakfast. You know. Then try to stay away from alcohol. I wanted to say shy. <laughs> 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 said try. try. Yes, yeah. yeah, so stay away from alcohol so that your blood is rich. Right? Mm. So, so by the morning before you are being tested, they will ask you if you had breakfast. If not, something is there for you, like refreshment. It's milk. It's the more. They give you milk and milk. More than milk. <laughs> uh -huh. Blood tonic. <laughs> <laughs> so by then you should be fit to to drink blood. Mm. Yes. Okay. So okay. Go ahead. Yeah. So when I asked about um, misconceptions, right? Um, I know I've heard so some, many, one or two people, a lot of it, and I've heard um, people say things about um, being paid to donate blood, right? Yes. Do people do that? Yes. Uh, we have um, like our three categories of um, blood donors, of blood, yeah, blood donors. Yes. The first is um, voluntary blood donors, just like what we're trying to drive, we're trying to get people to be altruistic and let them donate blood from the heart. So mm -hmm. these are the voluntary blood donors. Then we have um, replacement blood donors or family blood donors, where by just like what you did, that was a replacement, you did it for your family, right? Usually they will have given her blood from the blood bank, then they will get a family member to come and replace that blood. So in that sense, you may not need to pay for blood. Mm. If you're replacing blood, mm. you don't need to pay. Mm. Yes, in the government, government facilities, you don't need to pay. Then they told uh, professional paid donors. What they do basically is they just come, I want to donate, how much are you going to give me? They negotiate their blood and they get maybe 2,000 or 5,000. Only? And they're about. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so they get that money and they go. Mm. After one week, they'll come back again and say, ah, I don't get blood for body. Oh, yeah, collect another one. They'll collect money. So the World Health Organization and every facility is trying to discourage paid uh, blood donors because the blood wouldn't be rich. If I donate blood today, I need about um, five, six weeks to recoup. to recoup my blood. About 12 weeks, actually. Yes, mm. 10, 12 weeks to recoup my blood. Um, the blood um, cells come back to normal, regenerate and all of that. Then I cannot donate again. So that's why it's encouraged, um, encouraging for men to donate like four times in a year, not every three months. Then ladies, um, three times in a year, every four months because of the monthly uh, cycle, right? So back to your question, yes, people get paid 
to donate blood, but we are trying to discourage that at all costs. Mm. I was going to say, what is the average cost of, if you need blood, for instance, now, what is the cost? How much does it come to? Is it, I mean, I don't think blood is as expensive as oxygen, right? Oh, yes. yes. Uh, well, it um, varies from facilities to facilities. You know, like I mentioned, we have the private banks mm. and we have the government, government banks, right? So it's very, so you're looking at, say, 20,000 to 30,000. Thereabouts mm, for a right. pint of blood. For a pint of blood. Wow. Yes. So I, I know that in um, government hospitals, for instance, when you're pregnant, because I've heard some people say that if, I mean the people that had their children in government hospitals that when you're pregnant, part of what you will sign is that before uh, I think you would have to donate your blood as well, like you to replace, like what you said, the replacement yes. blood bank. You need to yes. replace that. But the problem that I have is, so the women then end up saying that, but they did not give me blood. Do you understand? So is it a lack of proper education to probably tell the women this is why this is being done? It is for in case you will need it. If you don't need it anymore, some other person will need it. Do you understand? Is it that because I've heard that complaint a lot, the complaints from um, mothers that uh, yes, I gave birth in a government hospital, they took my blood, but they never used it and you know. So I mean, so how do we start to like probably educate people better, do that um, social orientation? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Uh, but we sometimes um, share this information via our uh, media platforms, social media, and all that. Let people know that once you donate blood, as um, as as the spouse of you know the, the the woman in labor, once you donate blood, you don't expect your blood back. That if she do, if she that blood is not useful to her, if she does not need the blood, eventually it goes to the blood bank, and you've done something good by replenishing. Mm. The blood or like you know getting blood into, into the blood bag so it shouldn't be anything of controversy saying that uh, they, I, they collected my blood i want money for it or, or <laughs> why did i do i'm not okay yeah you owe the money, <laughs> you owe the money you so but something has changed um in recent years whereby you don't have to donate blood you know if you're going for maternity you don't have to get your spouse or family member blood these days so that's why we're trying to encourage people to just voluntarily donate blood just go donate it cost nothing the fact is that it is good for you when you donate blood you become more healthy i donated like two saturdays ago and i feel better mm. yes. so there's too much blood in your system you have to go and release actually I, actually i didn't <laughs> have enough <laughs> I, okay, I had enough but i was just like on the borderline when i still donated mm. but usually i have like more than enough so most of us we do carry more than enough blood around mm. you know we do we carry it around and it costs us nothing to just get like one or two pricks of the needle and you know save lives mm. because once you donate blood you can save about three lives mm. with just one pint of blood wow yes you can save about three lives wow. so so it's a good thing to do so the Nigerian factor, sorry, mm -hmm. Jennifer, I knew you wanted to come. The Nigerian factor, because hmm. you see, we are not going to talk this conversation finish. Before <laughs> I must say another misconception: people they believe in juju so much. It's just oh. like it's, it's just like someone asked me that uh, my placenta. I say, wait, I don't understand. I should carry the placenta. I always. Should... No, I'm being odd. Like, yes, yes. Because these are like yes. small, small things that because yeah. in Nigeria we we di we mystify a lot of things Jeez. a lot in the country. So yes. I mean, ah, they will not use my my blood for jazz. Mm. They will not use my this and all of that. Yes. So how is that impacting you know the blood drive? Yeah, it it is highly impacting on all those myths, all those beliefs, and uh, it is really because a lot of people think that their blood are being apart from being sold without them getting money from it, they think that their blood is being used for for, ritual. for rituals. Mm. You know. And um, it's sad that um, at this age, well, I can't blame a lot of people. Uh, we can always think about that. That's why I said that whenever you want to donate blood, make sure it is a well-organized government facility. Nobody will take your blood anyway because it's going to be registered. I don't know how they use blood for rituals. I don't know. But those that believe they do, they have a reason to believe so, right? But when it comes to blood donation, you should just forget that their blood is safe. You know, and they just have that mind that it's going to someone and it's going to save someone's life somewhere. <laughs> Jennifer, <laughs> are there any um, adverse effects um, in giving blood? Okay, um, I think the um, the benefits uh, um, we, uh, they outweigh the the adverse effects, right? The adverse adverse effects is just it's that the dizziness. The dizziness, yes. If you don't have enough and you donate, 
that's that's one then so if you donate too frequently before you replenish you're going to feel weak and sick right so these are basically the adverse effect but giving blood i don't think there's any um i don't physiological challenges coming you know unless you're you were not being tested properly before you donate blood and um if you have people with high ibp you know you can't donate blood diabetic if you are you can't donate blood you know some other illnesses you can't you won't be allowed to donate donate blood mm -hmm. so but it's way more positive so what negative. precautions or aftercare does one need to take into consideration after donating Let's say Jennifer won't go donate to me. Yes, uh, yes. She, she's asking for a lot. Yeah. 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 She's asking for a lot. Yes, yes. No, I like I like where you are going. So I always think <laughs> yes, <laughs> like, like the audience. Yes, yeah, so, yeah, so precautions like I mentioned, sleep well don't drink or smoke before. no she's even now talking so about after care. after care okay after like, care after mm. yes same blood. thing yes take more water take mm. a lot of water mm. as a matter of fact after donating you can't just stand up immediately you have to sit for like say 15 20 minutes and you'll be given water to drink so you need to gulp down like a bottle of um 75 cl of water yeah. before you you get up then after then don't exercise no strenuous exercise no you don't have to go to the gym for like two or three days right so and um just eat well don't starve yourself so i think that's basically the, the thing you so need to do pump, pump. Uh, for, <laughs> for two pump, for two pump. yes for two three days eat well you know you know break all those eat well but, but i i hear you when you say eat well but really to replenish blood is is pretty simple just eat a lot of vegetables yes anything that has iron in it yes, yeah. yes just just so, eat I mean, a lot it of that will, it will, um, you, you you don't need to go very far far away from your diet if you're doing the, the fit farm. farm yes definitely. yeah but how has, how has it been for you since um, the organization started? And, you know, I just want to touch a little bit on what you do with Sickle Cell, because I, I saw Sickle Cell in your bio. Yes. What you do, because that one is, is dear to my heart. So. Oh, okay, okay, <laughs> yes, okay. So um, blood donation and Sickle Cell are very related. As a matter of fact, I started my advocacy from Sickle Cell, right? And um, a lot of Sickle Cell patients need blood most of the time because they become anemic, they lose a lot of blood and it needs to be replenished. So the advocacy started from sickle cell, mm. then it moved to blood donation for everybody, right? So, um, okay, I came across sickle cell in, I think, 2017, 2018 in Abuja. And since then, even though I have family members who are also, you know, you know warriors, so it's, um, it's very related. So most of the blood units that we donate or that we get goes to a lot of sickle cell patients, apart from, you know, accident victims or cancer, cancer patients. Because sometimes sickle cell patients could get as much as, say, three, four pints at a time. And over the course of six months, maybe every month, some patients could, could need that much of blood. So a lot of blood stock goes to sickle cell patients. So it's very, very So, so I was going to just touch on that a bit, because I said sickle cell is dear to my heart because um, I have someone I mean, imagine if you 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 are carrying preg uh, pregnancy and you're carrying mm. you know two children and you are sickle cell and you now have you know your blood dropping all the way to like a four percent. You know, the average the thing is usually usually much more than, than yes, thirty percent. You know, a, a standard sickle cell patient when their blood is around eight nine percent, they are good. On like what's that fifteen percent? Yeah, yeah, of that, yes. right? So that's their standard average. So when you don't have that person drop, drop blood or this blood. But I, I realized that um, um, the the hospitals abroad, you know, they, just, they try to shy away from blo um, blood transfusion. Do you understand? They shy away from blood transfusion because I still feel, I mean, um, there's still this, um, uh, what's it called, study that shows that it is still best, right, that the blood is regenerated by itself, yes. you know, from the from the from, from, the, from, from, from the inside blood marrow yeah, but bone again, marrow. sometimes people yes. reject blood i mean my sister my sister in law that sadly passed the the entire blood that we gave her we saw it on the bed well i don't know that's a story for another day but i'm saying that you know how conscious are our hospitals when it comes to the decision for blood transfusion you know are there are there also things that you're doing in that regard because Blood transfusion usually is supposed to be like the last resort. It's not something that you just maybe have this in and you just immediately say you want to do blood transfusion. So yes. how conscious are the hospitals 
in that regard. In that regard. Uh, okay. Um, for the, the hospitals, they try, because um, for hematologists, after taking, doing the proper test and all that, usually blood transmission is the last resort mm -hmm. for sickle cell patients, the last resort. So they do their job very well to ensure that this person don't, don't just get blood because um, right now we are talking about blood safety. It's not all the time that someone needs blood, you transfuse his blood unless that person is on the red line and mm -hmm. you know that the last thing to do is just to give the person blood. So they are go. that conscious of yes, that? Yes, they are very conscious of that. Because me and you feel. Of that. Mm. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so you have a comment, right? Eh? Um, life changing. Life changing is not about giving out clothes or money to me. Before you say you change someone's life, you need to add value to the person's life. I mean, show a person how to catch fish is better than giving the person fish. Mm. Mm. Absolutely. And that's my principle when it comes to giving or material, um, especially money. You understand? I'd rather give you a job yes. than give you money. Because yes. with a job, you can generate money by yourself. That's why the culture of begging does not sit well with me. Mm. I really can't see a beggar on the street and just think I need to give him money. Yes. I'd rather give yes. you a job. If you yes. take a job, you can be collecting a monthly income. Yes. It makes sense to me. Definitely. Yeah. Okay, so I mean, if we had something to say to anyone out there that is still struggling, you know, that's still, still finding it difficult to give blood. Hmm. What would you say to that person? <laughs> yeah, uh, for me, what I would say is that, first of all, see giving blood as something of self-gratification. It's something that comes from, from the art. You are, you are doing something good hmm. for someone out there. So that's the first thing you should think about. Like, okay, you're saving lives, at least three lives. So that's the first thing. So when that sits well into your heart, you won't look at all these meats. Hmm. You won't look at the pain you might go through while donating blood. So it becomes a culture, it becomes a part of you that without doing that, you won't, you know, um, you won't feel okay. So once you are due to donate blood, you rush up to the center mm -hmm. and give blood. So forget the meat, like I've said, your blood is not being used for ritual. Mm. It's not being sold to make excessive income. There's a reason why you buy blood at the, at the, at the blood facilities and um, see it as something good mm. for humanity. That's just it. Jennifer, will you give blood? Yeah, I, I will. <laughs> I mean, it, it's not something that has really been impressed in my heart to say, oh yeah, I won't do this. But I'm sure if the opportunity arises it's something that i wouldn't mind um i wouldn't mind doing i'm very open i'm very open to it as far as it's, it's an organization that is clean right and i'm going to be well taken care of and all of that and it's going to be used for the right purpose i'm, I'm good how are you awesome <laughs> they will give her malt again <laughs> Oh yeah, uh, like I said, I've done it before a couple of years ago and yes, so uh, you know, I got um, when he mentioned that uh, his that they give out blood on their birthdays, I'm like well, Your birthday is coming. I'm like, should I give blood? Yes, 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 yes. Well, yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. yes, we might <laughs> But so, yes. so it, it, yes. the facility is running every month. So somebody can just come in on their every, birthday. Every day. Every day. So every day. So on your birthday, just walk into uh, my birthday don't pass my birthday yeah. next day. <laughs> you know what? Yeah, 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 yeah. So we organize, we organize, we organize like quarterly um, blood drives. Mm. Get people to come and donate blood at the facility. Oh blood drive. <laughs> yes, and um, hopefully one is coming up in December. When, please? You yes. better say the date. Ah, no, we've not finalized. Okay, the date yet, but it's, yes. it's in Lagos. But it's, it's in Lagos. Okay. Yes, it's in Lagos. So we'll let you know. Ah, uh, let's when. let's tell our viewers now if you can find your way. But is it only Bagada? Or oh, there's no. a center in VI, there's a center in Lekki, there's a so yes. are there centers? Yeah, the centers at um, um Lagos Island maternity or Lagos Lagos Island Hospital. Oh government. Yes, mm. yes, so you could donate there. You could donate like I said, Bagada. You could go to Agege um or what's it called? Like um government facilities, major major government facilities. Lagos State Government Facilities, it's safer to donate at those. Even in Ikeja, when you go to the uh, Ikeja, that's a low, uh, last suit, rather, Lagos State University Hospital. Hospital yeah. Yeah, just walk up to the blood bank 
and you can walk in and just tell them you want to donate blood so you can join that. Mm. Um, we are not only advocating, advocating for Lagos State, so we have um, the National Blood Transmission Service, MBTS, that covers everywhere in Nigeria. So yeah, so you could just check them up on, online and see, look for their center. There's somewhere in Ibadan, I think Jericho in Ibadan, we have centers in Abuja as well. So all over Nigeria, there are places where you could go to and... and, and so what would, be, what would support look like for you? Because, I mean, it's a non-governmental yeah. yeah, something, something. Yes. Money, we need money for, to survive Definitely. for this life. Definitely. So if somebody was looking at you today and they say, you know what, I want to support this initiative, what would that support, as, outside of donating the blood itself, yes. what, would, what would support look like for you to say, okay, this person is really coming to help me? Yes, you know, yes. yes. Um, we need finance. We need money to run the organization. We need... Um, uh, of course, media support, just like what we are getting right now, mm. to push out our advocacy and our message. So, but the major thing is actually money because for our volunteers, sometimes we need to pay them for maybe tea fair. Sometimes mm. basically, basically to tea fair, we need to provide refreshments, feeding and all feeding of that. And all that for blood drives, right? And we need to because we also organize like road shows, mm. we you know media campaigns and all that. All these things. Would, Money. Mm. So basically, money is the major, major thing. Because mm. I was just thinking about it. It's a non-for-profit, right? Yes. Um, what would support look like? So, I mean, there are so many things. Like you rightly said, there'll be road shows, there'll be campaigns, there'll be all of those things. And these things actually cost, you know, money. Yeah. But you guys are not involved in the, uh, pro, um, what's it called? That process is the process of, of purifying mm -hmm. or do you no, pay to, to them to do or they just collect the blood and that's it? No, they just collect the blood. And they will now take it up from there. Take it up from there. Okay. Yes. Yes. That's I mean that's amazing. Honestly, mm -hmm. I wish um, more people can do this. I'll try to come and donate mm -hmm. blood because I don't think I've donated blood since after that time, I don't. Nobody has called me that they need blood. Oh. So my own is not voluntary donor. It is <laughs> on a need basis. Yes. <laughs> on a need basis. So now that I've heard, let me not do like I did not hear. So I will be the first example. Because yeah, 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 maybe yeah, there's yeah. too much blood in my system. That's what I'm arguing with. Yes. You yes, have the do. benefits of blood donation. So I will lose weight. I'll definitely, yes. Hi. Once you donate regularly. I will, I will, I will donate you. every month. Oh, <laughs> I don't have too much. <laughs> you know? You don't want that. What's the meaning of that? You want you to, to be a responsible donor. No, no, no. He said, he, said, he, said, he said three times a year. Yes. I heard him very well. Yes. Therefore, the guys, you said four, four times, times a year. Yes. So that's every quarter. Why? Three? Okay, because of our monthly... Yes. Yeah, okay, that's, that, that, that makes sense, that works. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. I think we had a fantastic conversation. Um, I'm looking forward to your December event, so yes. hopefully we'll bring you back to tell us more about the, um, what's it called? Um, we are all about anything that would um, give humans better life and better living, and this is a fantastic initiative. Thank Not many so people would dedicate their lives and their time to things like this. Um, yes. It's an important thing that you're doing. For every time you hear that somebody, you know, is probably just got involved in an accident, definitely all of those things should come to, you know, to play. Or a woman that is having complications at birth, you yes. know, or somebody that is just sick or anemic and all of that. So yes. it's a fantastic initiative. Thank you so much. Thank you. We had fun. Thank you. Thank you. Jennifer, and uh, if I had three of us, yes. her birthday is, let me announce your birthday. Her mm. birthday is coming. <laughs> My birthday was last week Saturday. So oh. Jennifer, we will all come to come and donate blood. Yes. I, I think we should we should come yes, and please looking forward to seeing you there. Yeah, we'll, yes. we'll come and donate. Thank you. All right, thank you so much. Thank you, ladies, my fellow noisemakers. Before we go, make <laughs> sure you follow us across <laughs> all social media handles. At We Show Africa, you can interact with us further, drop a comment, and most importantly, follow all our engagements on social media, like, share, and invite your families and friends to watch and follow the conversation. Now, if you missed our quote from Mother Teresa herself, it's not how much we give, but how much love we put into giving. And the truth is, for you to give out blood, that is the high level, highest level of love you can show to anyone. Right, so let's let's show love, let's donate, and I um, mean, look for the centers that Said had mentioned. We'll see you guys tomorrow at 8 p.m. as we bring another great conversation to your screen. Ciao.